In this video, we solve problem 13.6.009 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to find the directional derivative of the function at P in the direction of V. And so we've got this function, and basically we wanna know the slope of this function at this location when X is equal to seven and Y is equal to 24. I wanna know the slope um, of the surface that's given by this function at this location in this direction. Um, now, in order to do that, we need to compute the directional derivative. Now, the directional derivative is denoted this way. We've got d sub u hat of our function. In this case, that's g at a particular point x naught y naught. That turns out to be the gradient of g at x naught y naught dotted with the unit vector in the direction um, that we're given. Now this time we're not given a unit vector, so we have to calculate the unit vector in the direction of V. Um, and this gradient can also be written this way. Oops, that should be. Um, the partial derivative of G with respect to X at X naught Y naught times I hat plus the partial derivative of G with respect to Y at X naught Y naught um, times J hat and then the unit vector, we can just say it has components u1 and u2. If we take that dot product, we get this. So some students may be familiar with the directional derivative formula in this form, this form right here, but it's really just the gradient dotted with the unit vector in that direction. I prefer to think of it this way, so this is what we will compute. Um, in our case, um, V is this vector with components um, three and negative four. I will write it in component form that way. Um, and in order to find the unit vector in that direction, I will um, first find the length of that vector. So in order to find U hat, the unit vector in the direction of V, we will um, compute the length of V. Oops, let me write that down, compute that. If our vector V has components three and negative four, the magnitude of V or the length of V, if we're thinking geometrically, comes from taking the components, squaring them, adding them, and taking the square root, uh, that, that's nine and that's 16. And of course, nine plus 16 is 25. And so we find that the length of V is five. So after we compute the magnitude of V, we'll compute U hat, which is V divided by its magnitude or length. So this points in exactly the same direction as V. It's just one unit long. And if we're taking a vector and dividing it by a scalar, we can divide each of the components of that vector by the scalar. So that's our u hat. That's what we're going to dot with the gradient of g at the point of interest x naught y naught. In this case, since we're interested in this point, um, that tells us that x naught y naught is uh, 724. So what we want is the gradient of g and then we want to evaluate it at, at 724. Now it's easier to compute the gradient if we rewrite this in a different form, rather than thinking of this as the square root of this quantity, I want to think of it as this quantity to the one half power, just using our exponent properties. If you're saying to yourself, what exponent property? That's this one, if you have the nth root of x to the m, that's x to the m over n. The index of the radical goes in the denominator and that power of x goes in the numerator. So when I calculate the gradient of capital or the gradient of g, I need to compute the partial derivative of g with respect to x and the partial derivative of g with respect to y. And that's easier to do when I've written um, the function g in that way. So at the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y squared quantity raised to the one half, that requires the calc one chain rule. 
is we've got a function nested inside another function. The derivative of a function to the one half power is one half of that function to the negative one half power. You wanna put your inside function back inside and then you wanna multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. And we want a partial derivative of the inside with respect to X treating Y as a constant. Well, the derivative of X squared with respect to X is just two X. And of course, if Y is a constant, the derivative of that constant, constant squared is just a constant, derivative of a constant is zero. It's constant with respect to X. So what we end up with here is a one half into two, they reduce. We'll have an X in the numerator, a square root of X squared plus Y squared in the denominator, just remembering that that expression to the negative one half means it's in the denominator and it would be the same thing to the positive one half and some raising something to the positive one half is the square root of that something. So we get that there. And we want the partial of G with respect to Y as well. I think we can probably already tell what the answer is by symmetry. The derivative of a function raised to the one half power is one half of that function to the negative one half. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to y, treating x as a constant by the chain rule. The derivative of this would be zero because it has no y's in it, and the derivative of that piece is 2y. So the twos reduce, and we end up with a y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, with those two partial derivatives, uh, we have everything we need to state the gradient. So I'll use this side of the sheet now. The gradient of G is the vector of first partial derivatives of G with respect to its independent variables. Since G had two independent variables, this um, gradient has two components. And we found them to be this and this. Now remember with the directional derivative, we want to evaluate this gradient at the point of interest. And our point of interest was this, x equals seven, y equals 24. So I just replace x with seven and y with 24. It's going to give me the direction of steepest ascent at that particular location, x equals seven, y equals 24. So I have seven squared plus 24 squared. Square root of that answer is 25. That's in our denominators. So we've got seven over 25 and 24 over 25. Okay. Now we want to take this vector and dot it with the unit vector. Unit vector in the direction um, that we're interested um, in, the, the direction that we're interested in, excuse me. And that's the directional derivative. If g is a function, well, we know that g is a function, um, but if we want the slope um, of the surface given by g of x and y at the point x not y not in the direction of u hat, we can find it this way. We take the gradient at that point and we dot it with the unit vector in that direction. This time, our point was 724. And for our particular function, the gradient at that location was this vector. And u hat at that location had components three fifths and negative four fifths. So 
So we're gonna multiply and add. We have seven over 25 times three over five plus 24 over 25 times negative four over five. And that's gonna give us a denominator of 125 and our numerator is 21 minus 24 times four or negative 75. which we can write as negative three times 25 over five times 25, the 25 is reduced. And we get a directional derivative of negative three fifths. And that just means again, that G um, defines a surface um, in three dimensional space, the slope of the surface in the direction of V equals three times I hat minus four times J hat at the location x equals seven, y equals 24 is negative three over five. So the instantaneous change in z um, in the direction of u hat is negative three over five or the slope, that's our slope of the surface at that point. 